Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing my first ever unhaul. Yes, I have never unhauled a book. Ever. I'm a bit of a book hoarder, I will admit that. I really like to cling on to them with their nostalgia or just because I don't want to get rid of them, but my shelves are pretty full at the moment and so I'm like, these ones are just hidden in the back because I don't want them on my shelves. So I'm finally building up the courage to say goodbye to them. <laughs> Obviously, I am not going to just throw them in the bin, that is a waste. So I do know of a secondhand bookshop which will take in books and usually they'll give you some credit for the store, so I'll probably do that. But I know that they have some rules about what they will and won't take, so I think there's a couple here that they won't take. But I will probably send like the stack of them, there's like 30 of them, to my cousin who's also a reader and I'll say, hey, do you want any of these? And if she does take any of them, I'll give them to her first and then I'll bring some up to the bookstore. But I'll be like taking them like one series at a time because I'm not going up with like 30 books being like, here, <laughs> I'm way too awkward to do that. I don't know where to start. I just have like them all laid out by series <laughs> beside me and <laughs> it's overwhelming. But uh, I guess I'll start with these ones. So the first ones is a set of five books and it is a series. And that is the Maze Runner series. I don't remember what order the books go in. So The Maze Runner, Scorch Trials, The Death Cure, The Kill Order, and The Fever Code. So that is The Maze Runner series by James Dashner. I I don't hate the series. A lot of these series I don't like fully hate. I've said a lot on my channel that I'm not a lover of dystopian. I usually I like them. I'll have like a bit of fun with them but I never love them as much as I feel like a lot of people on the internet do and I'm sure there'll be someone out there who will be happy to find the whole series but uh I do remember really liking The Maze Runner I think I gave it a four stars but the series went downhill from there I think the next one was like a three the third one was like a two and then the last two which are prequels I did not like at all I think they were either twos or ones as well so the next one I'm going to talk about is Three Dark Crowns and that whole series I think it's, it's the Queens of Benburn series I think is what it's actually called and so that is Three Dark Crowns, One Dark Throne, Two Dark Reigns and Five Dark Fates. Yeah I definitely had very mixed feelings on it. My friend did recommend it to me and I uh, didn't love it so I felt kind of bad about that but I didn't hate it. I think I think this was a three. I think the second one might have been a four and I am of the opinion that it should have stayed a duology. It was originally supposed to end after this but she continued the series. I think this was a three again and then I think I gave this a two. So so basically I'm getting rid of all books that have a disappointing conclusion. It follows three sisters who uh, every uh, every queen has triplets and then when they turn like 16 they have to fight for, uh, to the death and the one who wins is the queen of the entire place. This one was like all set up for the second one and then like the actual stuff happens in the second one <laughs> and then the third and fourth ones I didn't really like. I think my main issue with it was actually the writing style. It's oh it's kind of like an oh what's the word omniscient like perspective like narrator like it's not normal third person and I didn't really like it. It's the, I think my main problem with it but I had other issues with like the stories and stuff and I did love the characters. I did like two of the characters but uh, the third one I didn't really care about and even then I didn't love the ones that like I was kind of just more okay with them. But next we'll talk about a standalone and that is The Astonishing Colour of After by Emily X. R. Pan. This one, this was a three star for me so like I don't hate it at all. I definitely got something out of it. I didn't hate this one by any means or anything like that. I definitely think it had some really important moments and really important messages but I just wasn't a big fan of the writing I think again and I thought it was quite repetitive and I think it was just like maybe a little too long like it's like 460 pages far away contemporary and I feel like it should have been less than 400 to be honest. It follows a teenager whose mother dies by suicide and she leaves a note that says uh I want you to remember and she then goes to Taiwan to meet her grandparents for the first time and yeah and so she's kind of discovering more about her mother's family and her mother's past and it's 
definitely, it, as I said, it definitely had its moments, but I just didn't love it. So onto another series, and that is the Red Queen series. These ones I was, I wasn't, I was unsure about unhauling and like I still might hang on to them to be honest uh I'm not convinced I have not convinced myself 100% yet I'm like 90% there though so I have Cruel Crown which is two short stories we have Red Queen I mean look how beautiful this cover is look how beautiful it is then we have Glass Sword I think I'm is this the right order yeah and then King's Cage War Storm and then Broken Throne. So I actually gave the Red Queen series quite high ratings when I read them but I've forgotten everything about them and I think looking back I don't like them that much because literally like two years after I read them when this came out I picked it up I read it and I just did not like it I gave it two stars though I think that also could be to do with the fact I was salty that I spent like 10 euros on this collection and two of the stories were in here. Kind of salty about that anyway but I just didn't really like a lot of the stories. I think there was maybe one I was interested in. Yeah, I definitely know that my like reading taste changed between the time when I read Red Queen and Broken Throne. So I don't think I would ever reread them because I don't think I would enjoy them. Well, I gave the first three. I gave them all four stars. I gave Warstorm, I think three stars and I gave Broken Throne two stars. So that's another six books that I am getting rid of. So I'll talk about two more contemporaries and these are ones that I know that like people out there will be very happy to find in a secondhand bookstore. That is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. I've kind of come to the conclusion that Becky Albertalli is not the author for me. I, I did give this I think about a four stars at the time. I definitely preferred the movie a couple of issues with this but I did overall enjoy it and I give it a four stars but it's been like three or four years since I read it and then I picked up Leah on the Offbeat and I hate this book with a burning passion. I really really hate this book. I have ranted about it before on my channel. It's been a while since I've done that though. Leah was a terrible character. She was horrible to most of the people in her life and she and she treated her love interest very poorly in my opinion and I did not think it was cute and she blamed any time she said something rude or hurtful on her being a Slytherin and I really that really got on my nerves so I remember just <laughs> I really ended up hating this book so I definitely don't want this so these are the two that I am getting rid of next ones again another series I'll, I read mostly series so it's mostly series that I'm getting rid of uh, but that is the Nevernight Chronicles by Jay Kristoff and I did not enjoy these overall I I read them all last year I think did I start in September no I read one in September I think it might have been God's Grape I read one in September last year for Book Oblathon because there was a big plot hole in it and I was like this does not add up and uh, no one else seemed to have noticed that but and I, do, I never notice potholes. I'm just like, yeah, sure. I'm sure that makes sense. But then that, I was like, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and that's how you know it's bad. Which I would like to say to Starburst, who said, uh, if you love Robin Hobb or George R.R. R. Martin, you will adore Nevernight. No. No, you won't. I love her. I hate this. Probably because of the fact that our 16-year-old main character is way over-sexualized and it makes me uncomfy. I mean I had other issues as well and I mean a lot of people have been calling out a lot of stuff that goes on in this book uh but I mean that was like definitely like the main thing I noticed when I was reading this I was like I do not like the way this grown man like who's in like is, I think he's in like his late 30s or like early 40s or something so he's like a grown man and he's writing a 16 year old like really sexualized and it just made me so uncomfortable I was like you could have aged her up two years that doesn't make it that much better but at least she would be an adult and I would have a small bit more peace of mind but she's 16 in the first book and I'm like she's a teenager she I had a lot other issues with it uh the writing style I cannot stand and it's not necessarily the footnotes I thought that they were actually very interesting and the world building was great because of like things like the footnotes but just like repetitive words 
the way characters are described and just yeah um yeah I just can't I just can't I think I gave this a 2.5 I think I gave this a 2 as I said I saw a pretty big plot hole in this and then I actually enjoyed Dark Dawn I mean I still I think I gave it like 3 or 3.5 I think it might have been 3.5 uh so I definitely which I think is like kind of a bit of an unpopular opinion because most people seem to like this one the least uh I've seen a lot of people who love the series think that this was a disappointing conclusion which I don't think so I think it was actually a pretty decent conclusion another one of my main issues with it was like at the very start of the book like the narrator is all like oh uh if you're expecting this to be a story about an assassin with a heart of gold you're wrong she was ruthless and all this and then throughout the story you're like oh she's an assassin with a heart of gold she actually cares I wouldn't have cared about her not being like a completely ruthless heartless assassin if you hadn't made the point of she's not gonna be like that and then she was like that <laughs> yeah I don't I don't need them in my life anymore I really don't so then the next two again uh, these are other ones that are kind of uh, I'm on the fence about uh, and that is Carry On and Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell the third book came out uh, like two months ago a month ago whatever I'm unsure if I want to read it and because like if I read it and I enjoy it then I might keep these but then if I read it and I don't enjoy it I would definitely get rid of them but like I also I don't think I really want to read it and yeah uh I'm very conflicted this is the bottom line I think it should have stayed as the one book so I have this edition of Wayward Son I don't have the sprayed edges though it's just the nice hardback and I do have the dust jacket but I did not like this book. Again, this is another one I actually, I read this before I was on booktube. So I don't really have any like videos of me discussing my opinions or anything, but I did not enjoy this when I read it. Uh, it was a big letdown and it just, it was, it was nonsensical really. There was no plot. The characters had completely changed, which did make sense. It was so drawn out, nothing happened. It was complete filler and I just did not care. I think I gave this a 2 or a 2.5. I can't even remember anything that happened in here and but I can still remember stuff that happens in the first book which I read the first book probably like four years ago. I didn't reread it before this came out and yet I can remember more. I really really liked this when I first read it. I gave this I think a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was it wasn't it definitely didn't hit that like five star mark it like it didn't get that five star feeling for me but I really really enjoyed it and so I gave it a 4.5 so like that's a pretty damn high rating and so I'm unsure whether I want to get rid of it because I give it such a high rating uh try and convince me in the comments whether to get rid of it or whether to keep it uh but I definitely think I'm gonna get rid of Wayward Son so we have one more series to talk about and like it makes sense for me to get rid of them I don't think I will ever reread them I didn't love them but like I don't know I, I'm still hesitating because like what if I do and I'm like you're never gonna reread them and it's kind of like uh carry on I'm like oh but like the first book or the second book I could reread those the rest no not so much but I could totally reread the first two and I I'm never gonna do that I know I'm not but for some reason I am clinging on to them and that is of course the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. I have the last two down here. So I have spoken multiple times on my channel about my mixed opinions on this series. I gave Throne of Glass four stars, Crown of Midnight four stars, Air of Fire three stars, Queen of Shadows one star, Empire of Storms one star, Tower of Dawn three stars and Kingdom of Ash two stars and you may wonder why would you continue the series and the answer is because I bought all of the books at the same time it's a thing that I'm trying I'm trying to stop myself from doing that now stop buying the whole series you have no guarantees you're gonna like it uh, but yeah I had the entire series so I was like well I am finishing it <laughs> except Kingdom of Ash I actually didn't have that one so I, I did I did buy that because I was like I'm finishing the series <laughs> I'm like it makes sense for me to get rid of them because I do not love them but also I'm gonna miss them <laughs> I'm gonna miss them a little 
And I mean, Sarah J Maas is such a popular author. So someone will come across them and be like, oh my God, can't believe they're all here. And so like, yeah, it makes sense for me to get rid of them. And like the back of my mind, I'm like, but what if you want to reread these? Because as I said, I gave both of these a four stars. I really enjoyed these. And, and just so you know, I love Kale. I don't care what Sarah J Maas tried to do and trying to destroy his character. I was not having any of it and I will love him forever. Oh, but what if I want to reread it for him? <laughs> like just the first two because she tries and fails, in my opinion, to destroy his character in the later books. I really love him. And so I kind of want to be like, oh, maybe I should keep them just in case I want to reread him. That does not make sense because I do not like this series that much. So yeah, so they're going. I'm not lifting all of these books because that is would be way too much, but I will set them all on the floor beside me. So there's still like the Maze Runner series down there, but I am not trying to put those on top of this. Like we are in dangerous territory right now. This is goes all the way from my floor up here. Um, so it's a, it's a hefty stack and I'm very afraid of it toppling over. It will most likely topple over, but <laughs> So that is 30 books that I want to unhaul and I will slowly do it. So that is all. Thank you guys so much for watching. I too hope you enjoyed. If you did, subscribe. I will see you all in the next one. Bye.